A few months ago, I saw this really cool post by someone called Roughname on Twitter. They'd used a Puck.js device, which is this button here, to let them skip to the next song on their phone while they were driving, which obviously lets them keep their eyes on the road. I thought I'd show you how easy that is to do with Puck.js. So um, these are Puck.js devices. Um, you can get different cases for them. I'm just going to use the black one now. Um, first step is to um, take it to bits, take the little tab out of the battery so the battery is connected, um, and then connect to it with the web ID. All of this is described online um, and it varies depending on your platform, so I'm not really going to go into it here. But you click this button, you connect, and once you're connected, you can do things like uh, ask this device what its temperature is. And this is all kind of happening on the device itself and it'll tell you. Um, what we want to do is to um, do something when the button's pressed. This is actually like a little clicky button. Um, to do that, we'll, we'll write some code on this side. We'll say uh, set watch, uh, and this will execute a function when something happens. Um, so we'll say we want it to watch the button, and we want it to listen to the rising edge of the button. We want it to repeat all the time, not just once and we want to debounce it. Um, because this is a physical button, um, the contacts can actually bounce on and off thousands of times a second. And of course we don't want to get more than one press, we just want a single press every time we press it. Uh, so let's just get this to print hello every time it's, it's pressed. Upload this code, press that button, and it'll say hello. Um, now at this point we could go straight in and we could use the Bluetooth keyboard code and we could make it um, play or pause the music or do something like that. But we want to maybe um, do two different things. We want to detect a short press or a long press and do something depending on that. So all we have to do here is um, we'll look at the data that gets passed into this function and instead of looking at the rising edge, which is when the button is pressed, we'll look at the falling edge, which is when it's released. Um, so now, if I look at the difference between the current time of that event and the last time, which would be the time that the button was pressed, we should see a number, which is the number of, um, of seconds that it's been held down. So if I do a, a relatively short pulse, we'll see that it comes in at um, significantly under half a second. I think for me, about a third of a second is a good figure. If I do a long press, you know, it comes in at probably a half a second, or you can do a really long press, which will obviously be like over a second. So all we need to do now is to uh, make a decision based on that. So we'll write it into a variable, and we'll say if the length is greater than 0.3 of a second, which would be my long press, then we'll do something. Um, let's just flash an LED at the moment. So we'll make that one the red LED, which is LED1. Uh, we'll do that for a little bit. And for this one, we'll flash the green LED for a short pulse. So if I upload this, short pulse, um, green LED, long pulse, red LED. So now we want to um, add the, the actual multimedia key stuff. So there's a page on this here. Um, uh, HID devices are human interface devices. You can have either a keyboard, which has actually got, you know, letters, numbers, arrows, things like that, or a multimedia keyboard, which has got play, stop, pause, volume, things like that. So basically all we want is, um, is a code from here. So I'll just copy this out, paste this in. Now, we don't care about much of this. We probably want a short pulse, which would be this one, to um, play or pause the music and we want a long pulse to, um, to move to the next track. And we could obviously, we could make a really long pulse go backwards if you wanted, just by adding another if statement here. And then we'll get rid of these bits of the example. And that's it, we'll click upload. And we're ready to go. This is now saved into RAM. So if you were to remove the battery, um, it would be lost. But to get around that, you can literally just type save on the left-hand side, just like that. Um, but I'm not going to do that for this example. So now we have the Puck programmed. The next step is just to connect it to your phone. So if you go down into Bluetooth settings, go to more settings, and we'll wait for it to try and find the Puck device down here. 
And you can see it's found it almost immediately and it's got a little icon next to it which shows that it's actually, it knows it's a keyboard. So if I press this, let's say pairing, uh, and then connecting connected, and now it's ready to go. So if we um, go back to some music, maybe, um, we'll find that it does take a few seconds for the phone to kind of get to grips with it. So it may not work immediately. So if I press the button, um, and there you go, it's going. And you can pause it just by a simple quick press, play again, pause. If I want to move to the next song, all I do is long press, let go, and then I can pause it again. So this is all really handy. Um, you can obviously add different patterns of presses, you know, like a super long press or two quick presses. Um, all you have to do is change the code very slightly to do that. The pucks also have um, this little hole in the back of them, which will allow you to um, put maybe a paper clip or something in there and then hang it on your car wherever you want to. Otherwise you can just use, you know, sticky back plastic, or you can even drill a hole through the back of here and just screw it onto something. So if you like this video, please subscribe and share it. I'm going to be trying to do an awful lot more um, of this kind of thing with mic controllers, home automation, electronics and that kind of stuff. Thanks for watching.